All right, Lady Ada, we got a bunch of new stuff this week. However, okay. you wanted to show something that um, it we need. Than new. It was less than new because you wanted to show it last week, but we didn't have it with us. Wait, and now, of course, I just. Uh oh. Uh oh. Wait, I just lost it. Well, did you have it in your hand here? Oh, my goodness. Go. No, it's right here. Okay. So, everything's black. <laughs> so, if my components yeah. are black, it's a little bit like where to go. Okay. Yeah, we got some. So, our kiddo has black clothes and everything's black here so sometimes you just see this like head <laughs> anyways all right i want to show this uh this thumbstick um so this thumbstick we uh put in the store last week but i um forgot to bring one home with me to show off in a live demo uh so it's nice that this is a uh it's got six pins whoa so close uh there's two analog joysticks and then one switch so the switch is two pins and the analog joystick is uh power ground and then two analog pins um, but I just wanted to show what a nice analog joystick this is. And then this also has a uh, select. So it's you can't quite hear it, but it does click in. So it's very like Joy-Con-esque. Yeah. But um, it's something you can actually use because it uh, just shows up as two analog uh, potentiometers and a tactile switch. Okay, next up. Okay, we have a heater element. Uh, somebody actually asked us to carry this, and I was like, this is a good idea. So for our quick... Uh, I think the 957 hot air station. Um, the hot air elements and hot air stations are actually not designed to, you know, they don't last forever. Eventually they burn out and they're designed to be replaceable. So if you've been using that hot air station a lot um, and you eventually, you know, the hot air element breaks, you don't have to replace the whole station. I uh, just grab one of these pieces. You'll have to do the surgery yourself. It doesn't look too bad. Looks like there's a the thermocouple sensor, uh, the red and the yellow wires, and then the power connector. Uh, which is that big uh, chunky connector in the middle um, plug and play close it back up and you're ready to heat up again all right next up uh, people are asking about these are here okay there's two cameras and it took me a while to figure out the difference um, so the first camera is the camera module three wide and so this is a it's an all-in-one ready-to-go camera module it's uses like this new sony sensor i think it's uh, 12 megapixels and it's got um a hold on actually the case in front of me it has the sony imx 708 12 megapixel sensors with i squared c focus actuator so the reason it looks kind of big the big metal piece is there is an autofocus capability built in um the lens can move up and down just like most modern uh cool. smartphone cameras you know the, the lens moves back and forth so it can focus um so that capability is now available in the raspberry pi cameras whereas the camera one and camera two do not have that capability this has a 120 degree diagonal, you know, wide angle view. Um, you could probably put another lens on top of it, but it kind of is designed to use as is and um, you know, supported with Raspberry Pi. If you're using a Raspberry Pi A or B, like one of these standard size Raspberry Pi computers, uh, it has a 20 centimeter cable that you can plug right in, use the Pi camera software, or Pi camera two or lib camera, uh, and you're ready to rock. If you have a Pi Zero, um you'll want to grab one of the adapter cables that we stock and it, you know it only comes in one size but it's, it's pretty long and um and then you can, of course you can always use a uh, one of our camera extenders we have a in the shop it's like it's called the csi extender thingy uh, you can use that if you need to extend um the cable even more but this adapter will at least get you to the right uh with fpc connector um, otherwise just a nice little upgrade and there's going to be more versions of this camera, but right now the wide camera is the one that's available. Okay. And they have a video, so we're just gonna play it. shot on the camera i love that it says at the end like shot on shot. very nice okay next up another camera next up this is not the same it, it looks very similar but it's actually a totally different uh camera module so this is the raspberry pi um high quality camera it uses um hold on let me see if it's the sensor it also has a uh, 12 point 
3 megapixel camera, but I don't remember what the chipset it uses. It's, probably also, it's also Sony, but I don't remember the exact um, chip uh, uh, sensor. Um, it doesn't come... So this big metal thing is, is called an M12 lens adapter. So it doesn't come with a lens, and you need to add a lens. When you get it, it basically just has like this raw sensor element exposed uh, to the world. Hey, yo. You have to have fun. <laughs> yeah, don't don't spit on it. Don't drop your uh, coffee onto it. Uh, you need to get a separate lens. Now we already stock in the shop um, a different, very similar looking high quality camera that uses a C or CS type lens. This is called an M12 lens. So, you know, basically um, if you, you know, if you find M12 mount lens or M12 mount adapter, uh, you'll be able to use this high quality camera with those lens kits. Let me show them on the overhead because they're they're pretty different. So this one actually I'm going to see. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some light. Well I just yeah there you go. So this is um this is the M12. So um yes this is the M12 so it's a high quality camera um but they just mounted it onto a piece of metal that now has uh M12 threading on it. And it also comes with a couple of little adapter thingies. Well, to be honest, they just, they're little plastic adapter things. And then you can see the lens element, uh, sorry, the sensor element in there. Uh, keep it protected with your little cappy cap. So just remove that, um, insert the lens, and then yeah, I think put it back. Yeah, those are the little adapter thingies. I guess they're used for mounting the lens onto it. And then this is the, um, this is the uh, camera three wide. Mm. And you can see... Oh, thank you. Yeah, you can see it's significantly taller. So our, you know, we have a cute little case. Um, it will definitely not fit in this case um, because the, the 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 height of this motor mount is um, quite a few millimeters taller. So just be aware if you're using an existing Raspberry Pi case or you know whatever uh, enclosure, um, it may not fit if it's expecting the height to be um, the same as the Raspberry Pi camera one or camera two. Um, otherwise, it's the same interface cable um, as the camera three. Sorry, the the, rest, the camera three has the same interface cable as the camera one or camera two, um, so you can use it with uh, any Raspberry Pi. Okay, and to start the show besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our community, everyone who's keeping things going, our staff, customers is the OV fifty six forty camera module break. Yeah, it's coincidental. I mean, I didn't know that you know, when this came out, I wasn't. I didn't know that we were going to have the Raspberry Pi cameras. Um, but uh, I'm also doing camera stuff. So this is a uh, camera module breakout, and it looks very similar to existing camera module breakouts, but it's a lot better because I we've been doing a lot of camera coding, and um, I learned a lot from trying to interface to other camera module breakouts. Um, so this is for a 10-bit wide uh, parallel interface camera, sometimes called OV7670s, OV2640s. This is the OV5640 in particular. It's a five megabit, uh, sorry, five megapixel camera with a uh, eight-bit interface, and then the lower two data bits are are used often for a motor controller or strobe or something. Um, you do need to have a chip that can support this interface. It's not like you can connect an Arduino Uno to it. It'll just work. Uh, first off, it's three volt logic. Use I squared C to control um, the resolution and whether it's a JPEG mode or RAW mode. And then you have to blip the data out of the camera very quickly. So the RP2040 um, can do it. We have some example code to do it in CircuitPython. And uh, some ESP32, S2, and S3 boards can do it. You know, can, th that family of chips can do it as well. Um, the 7051 in theory has the ability to do parallel capture on cameras. However, it, we never really got it to work very well, so we don't recommend it. Um, so far, the RP2040 it has enough SRAM uh, and it has the PIO peripherals to be able to get that data off the camera. You have to get it off, you know, as the pixels are coming out, which is which is quite fast. Um, and the ESP32, S2, and S3 have peripherals that you can use to DMA, um, and they have example code to DMA the the video. Um, or frame buffer data off and into the PSRAM on those chips. Um, so a couple of things that I improved on it. So let's go to the overhead and I'll, I'll show the things that I, I did that are better. So it has the standard 2.9, uh, sorry, 2 by 9 pin header connector down here. So a lot of camera ready boards have this connector. So you can use that connector. 
Um, but I also added a duplicate of this rope up here. Um, but it's 0 0.3 inches apart, which means you can use this in a breadboard um, or a prep board or something where you don't want to have the pins right next to each other. Uh, another thing I did is I added a little heat sinking area. So some of these cameras can get pretty warm and it actually causes a little bit of image drift. Um, they sometimes get a little bit purplish or reddish. Uh, so you can attach a heat sink. Um, these are veered through and there's another gold uh, outline, um, you know, exposed copper um, gold on the other side. And so um, you have some good thermal transfer. I put a uh, oscillator on here that generates 24 megahertz uh, clock signal. And so you can connect that to the X clock pin because sometimes you have a peripheral that can do the data blitting, but it can't generate the 24 megahertz signal or maybe you don't want to use a pin for that. So you can use this uh, onboard crystal. And second, uh, like the um, camera module for the Raspberry Pi we talked about, there are some uh, OV2640s or OV5640s that have a motor uh, that can do uh, autofocus. And so to do that, you have to connect the VM, the data one pin uh, to 3.3 volts. So here's a jumper that lets you do that. Don't connect it by default in case your camera does use the data one pin as output. You don't want to short it to ground. But if you're using a camera that has a motor control um, to short that pin, and then there's also a power good uh, LED on the back and the strobe signals also brought out. So just a lot of little updates and you know improvements. It's otherwise the same pinout and shape and mounting hole sizes and everything as standard you know two by nine header camera modules but i just wanted something better uh for folks that are experimenting with these uh cameras so um it's coming to the store soon uh next week we'll probably have it in the shop and i'll have some demo code running as well okay and then i just wanted to make note um we have these new quarters um yeah. so you'll notice that they're uh, in new product pages and more so that's new products for the week yeah um, don't forget, you can sign up for the newsletter. You can do that through Adafruit Daily or the newsletter that you can sign up for on our store. Um, you have to go into your preferences and allow it. We do not automatically sign anyone up. Just go to adafruit.com slash newsletter for the new product newsletter. And that is new products for the week.